Autotech has been in car audio since the 1980s, and after recently testing this 30-year-old plus four-channel amplifier, made me think, how are their amps today? Off to Amazon, I found this TA-1255.4 four-channel amplifier by Autotech for $60. That's right, $59.99, free shipping with Prime. Of course, taking one for the team, I press the buy now button. A couple days later, Amazon driver delivers it to my front door, and here it is. Now, before we get it open, let's talk about today's channel sponsor. Another company that's been around since the 1980s, Savard Speaker Systems. Today, we're going to show off the HiQ 6.5-inch subwoofer. You've seen this on my channel many times before. I've had these for years. Really like these speakers. So stick around till later in the video, and we'll show you more about these subs. Back to the lecture at hand. Here is the Autotech Car Audio 4-channel amplifier. Made in China. This box is ugly. These colors, I'm sorry. Just don't do it for me. So we get the box open. As you can see here, we have a silica gel packet. Do not eat. Make sure you throw that away. Don't want your kids or your pets or anybody else to get a hold of that. Now we'll pull out the amplifier, which is in some foam. And we got some other goodies, including the stickers that say tread lightly. Not sure what that has to do with the Autotech amplifier, but anyway, you get two stickers. Also, we get this quick start guide. It's not really an owner's manual, but it does go over some of the basic uh, installation procedures, how to hook up the amp, how to wire it, all that good stuff. It does not mention anywhere the power output though, either max power or RMS doesn't say anything about any of those, but we also have a high level adapter here. You get one for the front and one for the rear channel. Also, we get mounting screws, so you can mount the amplifier wherever you'd like to in your vehicle. Next up, the meat of the box here, which is the amplifier. We'll get it out of the plastic. And then once again, you can see I'm not a big fan of this look. It just looks super cheap. Maybe it's just because I'm an old guy. TA-1255.4, 1255 watts. Here is a comparison to the old school 7054 BTX amplifier that I showed on my other old school stereo channel, they're about the same size, and uh, just the old one feels a lot more substantial. It's a lot heavier, seems a lot better built. Back to the TA-1255, which is the main source of today's video, let's look at one end of the amp you can see, designed and engineered in the USA, proudly stamped there, or silk screen on the amp. You can also see the high level input, you can see the crossover, which can be set to high pass, full, or low pass, also the adjustments for the high pass and low pass, a base EQ and the gain, that's for channels three and four on the left. Also we'll see the four channel RCA inputs as well as gain control, crossover and high pass filter for channels one and two. There is no low pass filter on channels one and two. We also have the high level input and the power and protect LEDs as well. On the opposite side of the amp, we have the power connections as well as the speaker outputs in addition to some fuses. Now everything is via screw down terminals so you will need the fork style connectors to get it that's connected right. Ground, remote, and 12 volt again are all the same size connector here. Two 30 amp fuses for 60 amps total of fusing. Here you can see channels one and two and also see how to bridge the amp, which is a left plus and right minus. Then channels three and four, the same setup. We have left plus right minus for bridging that as well. So this can be a two, three, or four channel amp. As for power output, in addition to Amazon.com showing the output ratings and max power, so does Maxonics on the Autotech website. 4x300 at 2 ohms, 4x150 at 4 ohms, or 2x600 bridged at 4 ohms. Now knowing max power means nothing, let's do some big dummy math. Take that 60 amps of fusing times 14.4, we get 864 watts. Class AB amps are about 50% efficient. So that shows 432 watts is about what we should expect out of this amp. As you guys know, we have the amp dyno so we can verify the true output power of this amp. But before we do that, let's look at the dimensions. Kind of an average size for an amplifier, about 10.2 inches for the length, 8.8 .8 inches for the width, 2.1 inches for the height. Now when we say 10.2 inches for the length, we are including these two end caps, which are plastic in nature and held on by three screws onto the amp and they help cover the terminals. Now here are the style connectors that you should use for this amplifier, and these fit right in. We're using eight gauge for power and ground. Of course, if you stick around till later, we will show you what makes this amp tick. Right now we're gonna tease you, but you will show the guts later. Let's fire up the SMD to more engineering amplifier dyno so that we can test the RMS power output of this amp, including 
Power output on watts on the left, the ohm load in the middle, the voltage of dyno on the right. We'll also have the remote clamp so we can calculate efficiency. Yeah, let's do it. I'm pumped. First up, four channel mode. Four ohms rated 150 watts times four max. Let's find out what it does. Certified at one kilohertz to 1% distortion. Yeah, around 35 watts per channel at 14.13. Let's uh, reset the dyno here and try the uncertified test up to clipping and see what we get. Just a little bit more, 37 watts per channel at 14.1. What about dynamically, one kilohertz, four ohms, four channel mode. All the channels are loaded, two of them are tested. Just slightly more, we got 35 and 39 watts, 14.2. I will show the efficiency later in the video when we show the results. Now let's try two ohms at four channels rated 300 watts by four max. Certified test, 1% distortion, 48 watts times four. And they rate this 300 by four so that people will buy them. Just abysmal. Anyway, uncertified to clipping. Let's see what we get. Can we get that 50 watts? Very close. 49 watts times four. That's right at 200 watts total where it's rated 1200 watts. Yeah, that's pretty close, don't you think? No, it's not. Dynamically, 51 and 61 at 14.13. Now let's bridge the amp using the left positive, right negative of each speaker pair going from four channels down to two. It's rated 600 watts by two max at 14.4 at four ohms. We're feeding it a one kilohertz signal. Let's see what we get here. About 104 watts per channel, pulling 32.8 amps, which is interesting because there's two 30 amp fuses with this amp, which uh, makes us kind of curious is where's all that extra current that's not needed here. Uncertified to clipping around 109 watts per channel, right at 14 volts. Dynamically, let's send the one kilohertz pulse tone into the amp. And here you can see we got a little bit of a channel difference going on, 106 and 121, right at 14.1 volts. Now this being an inexpensive class AB amplifier, it's not rated for one ohm stereo loads or two ohms bridged, but of course we're gonna try it. So certified two ohms bridged, we get about 113 watts average per channel at 13.9 volts. What about uncertified to clipping? And let's see here, 117, 114. We're still not close to that 60 amps of uh, fusing, which is interesting because a lot of times with amps like this, when I test them, I actually pull more current than the amps are rated, the fuses are rated. 124 and 139 there at two ohms bridge dynamically. Here you can see the results, about 35 watts by four at four ohms, 48 by four at two ohms, efficiency right about 50%, maybe a little less. As for the bridge numbers, here you can see the results. Nothing anywhere near the rated power, max power, which we know is not valid. But what about that big dummy math? Let's go back to that. 432 watts? No, sir. More like 264 total. That was at two ohms bridge as well. Amp's not even rated there. I digress. Let's go hook it up to some speakers, see how it sounds. Savard 6.5 inch high Q subwoofer has an RMS power handling of 350 watts, sports a 2 inch voice coil, 11 millimeter one way X Max, 22 millimeter overall, 80 ounce Y35 magnet 
long strand Kevlar cone for added strength, cast aluminum basket, as well as integrated 12 gauge spring loaded terminals. Overall, these are great subwoofers. I've used them for several years. Thanks to Savard for sponsoring this video. If you want to check these out, make sure you check links in the video description. Use code WOW7 for 7% off these or other Savard subwoofers. Let's go on to more flexing. Overall, it didn't sound bad in a three channel mode. Pushing that Savard six and a half inch subwoofer nicely sounded pretty good overall. I was kind of impressed, honestly. All right, here we go. The big surprise of the day. Let's take off the bottom panel and see what this amp looks like inside. Are you ready? Here we go. Boom. <laughs> That's right. Single sided board, class AB, cheapest of the cheap. You have to remember $60 retail. This means like $20 wholesale for this amp. So super cheap components. There is the power by Maxonix, the model number. Some 25 volt, 2200 microfarad capacitors there on the uh, power supply section. Just overall, super cheap build quality through the whole components. Looks like something you put together in a high school electronics class, you know, uh, with your first electronics kit. 35 volt, 2200 microfarad caps here on the rails. And notice the transformer going to the other side of the board using wires. That's right, because it's a single sided board. Now let's talk about the pros and cons. For the pros, it's very simple. It's inexpensive, about 60 bucks, free shipping, and it has decent sound quality. And that's really it. Now for the cons, several of these, including ugly. Yeah, I kind of think it looks ugly. It's lightweight, it feels cheap. Doesn't have any remote base knob. It is a four channel amp, so a lot of those don't have it. The gain controls and all that stuff is plastic, feels really cheap. It's rated in unicorn watts. That's right, 300 watts by four or 600 by two is a joke. And why do they use two 30 amp fuses? I don't know, it didn't need that much. Maybe just to fool people who thought it was more powerful than it really was. Well, there you have it, the Autotech TA 1255.4. Tested here today. Thank you as always for supporting my channel. Check me out, patreon.com slash old school stereo. Till next time, Big D, I'm out of here. Had some extra segments here of this amplifier in three channel mode, powering the subwoofer and the bookshelf speakers. Just wanted you guys to see what this little Savard six and a half inch sub can do with only about a hundred watts of power. Let's see.